Um, I am sorry, I have to make one correction to that introduction. Um, I have not been in YWAM for 40 years. I would, I would have been 15 when I started then, but I've been 25 years. Um, I've, I've staffed or led more than 40 schools, um, which maybe is almost like 40 years, I don't know, <laughs> depending on the school, of course. Uh, but it is, uh, it is really cool to be here. Um, for many years, I have filled out uh, reference forms for students coming to YWAM Perth, so it was always a Nice to come and actually see what this, um, what's happening here. Uh, the message that uh, on my heart tonight is actually quite simple, and it's um, it really is has a lot to do with the why. Um, I part of why I've been able to be in YWAM as long as I have, and um, I have to say that when I first joined YWAM, I was not necessarily a youth with a mission. I was 30 years old, and I was married, and I had three children. And my wife and I were both uh, public school teachers in California, and uh, God called us to make a shift. We sold our house, we sold everything, and we went and did this thing called a DTS. It was only meant to be a six-month experience, and 25 years later, we are still uh, waiting for God to call us on. But, so beware, beware, for those of you who are here for just six months, okay? Um, what I want to tell you tonight is that uh, God calls us to walk in courage. And I know that sounds very simple, but um, I look back and I realize that I was, I was not very courageous starting out. Uh, when we sold our house and we paid for all of our tuition, we went on outreach to Russia, and then we did a secondary school, and we spent a summer working in the slums of Chicago, and then God called us to be on staff. And you know, at that time I had no money. And I was scared. I really, from what I had learned in DTS, I had learned to listen to God, and I thought I was hearing him, but it just didn't make sense. Um, we were a family of five, and um, my, my family back home in California was not at all cheering me on. Uh, my mother-in-law was telling me that I was destroying my family, and that my marriage would not survive this. And these were all the messages I was getting, and I have to tell you, I wish I could tell you that I just faced them with great courage and faith, but I was shaking, and I was scared. And so tonight I want to just share with you just some things that I've learned about courage, about moving forward when you don't feel like it, and when other emotions are saying, do the opposite. Let's see if I can get this iPad to come on. Okay, here we go. Here's, here's a definition of courage, okay? I, as I said, I am actually a recovering English teacher, okay? And so I really still like this thing of defining words and knowing what we're talking about. Courage, the quality of mind or spirit that enables a person to face difficulty, danger, pain, opposition, etc. That's actually in the dictionary. It says etc. Without giving in to fear. Okay? Now, what I want to do is I want to read a real short passage. It's part of a story that many, I'm sure most of us know. And it's a conversation I'm going to read between a young boy named David and his king named Saul. And it's found in 1 Samuel chapter 17. Don't worry about this Philistine, David told Saul. I'll go fight him. Don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy 
And he's been a man of war since his youth. But David persisted. I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats, he said. And when a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. And if the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. There's a violent picture for you right there. I have done this to both lions and bears, and I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too, for he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from the Philistine. And Saul finally consented. All right, go ahead, he said, and may the Lord be with you. And I don't know if that last statement from Saul was very faith-filled. I think it was more like, God bless you. Well, I have three observations I want to share with you tonight. And they all have to do with dealing with our giants. And the first one, pretty straightforward, courage is a choice. I mean, we look at this story of David. Uh, He wasn't forced to go out and meet this giant. He chose to. And it had a lot to do with his relationship with God. David knew that in order for him to walk out with integrity, his relationship with God, he could not let this giant go on defying everything he believed in. So he chose courage. Now, here's the thing about courage. If you wait for the feeling to come to you, you'll be waiting a long time. When God speaks, we cannot afford to wait to feel like obeying him. Feelings come and go, and I'm sure you've all um, experienced that. But but see, the opposite is also true. I can choose to not operate in fear. Uh, There's a a short little verse that I think is very interesting. Luke chapter 1, verse 30. The angel Gabriel came to Mary and said, Don't be afraid, Mary, the, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. Now, what's so profound about this verse? What did the angel say to Mary? Don't be afraid. Now, that's such a common little phrase. I think we overlook sometimes the significance of what is really being said there. If she is being commanded to not be afraid, what does that mean is possible? For her to choose to not be afraid. But now this is where it gets a little confusing because, you know, Jeff, I, um, is it wrong then to feel fear? Well, here's what I've learned. You can't, I cannot control what I feel, but I can definitely control what I do with what I feel. I have felt fear many, many, many times in my life, and especially in this walk with God, especially in this walk with missions and outreach and working with all kinds of interesting people, I have felt a lot of fear. But I've always had to choose what I was going to do in response to it. And this is the nature of fear. Fear is an emotion. Courage is a choice. To make this clear, we may feel fear, but we are called to not obey it. Okay? Our obedience is always to something greater than fear. So observation one is just that courage is a choice. I understand the feelings, but we still have a choice with what we're going to do with them. Observation number two. I've learned that one of the tools we've been given to fight fear 
and make room for more courage in our lives is the gift of remembering. It's actually what helped David, if you think back to his conversation with Saul. What is it that he based his courage in? Did he just work himself up into an emotional fit and say, I'm going to go out and I'm going to rip this giant apart. No, he didn't do that. He thought back and remembered. What has God, when have I seen God working in my life in the past? Hmm. You know, there was that lion, that pesky bear. They came in and I, to do my duty, I had to go deal with him. Now, it doesn't say it, but I have a feeling that David might have had a little fear facing a lion and a bear, but he did it. And in remembering what God had done for him in the past, it put him in a position to make right choices for the future. See, one of my biggest problems in dealing and responding to God is some, I can be forgetful. Has anybody ever struggled with that? God does some great work in our life, provides everything we need for a certain need, and a few months later, we have another need. It's a little bit bigger this time, and we just freak out. But this is different. You know, this is more money now I need. The gift God gives us in dealing with fear is remembering the stories. See, we each need to start collecting and remembering the stories, the testimonies. This is why testimonies are so powerful. They are a gift in dealing with fear. I can deal with this next challenge because I remember when God delivered me in the past. Or we can actually draw courage from other people's stories and testimonies. And this is why it's so important for us to share in community the stories of God's deliverance. It stirs courage. All right, so observation one, it's a choice. Observation two, the gift of remembering. And by the way, let me just read a quick scripture here. Um, in Deuteronomy, which is when Moses was talking to the Israelites right before they went in to take their promised land, chapter seven, verse 18, this is what Moses said to the Israelites. Don't be afraid of them, that is, all those armies that we're going to face on the other side of the river, just remember what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and to all the land of Egypt. And actually this theme is repeated numerous times in the history of Israel. And we actually hear in the, among the prophets that one of the things that they were condemned for was that they forgot what God had done. You know, a, a faulty memory is not a godly thing in this case. And we need each other to remind us what the Lord has done for us. Observation three. Making the choice between courage and fear determines what we are worshiping. Now, why would I say that? Well, as I've been looking into this whole thing of dealing with my own personal fears and trying to understand a biblical response to something I'm learning that I'm not the only one that has to deal with fear, um, this is what I learned about one of the meanings for the Hebrew word used often in the Old Testament for fear. One of the meanings stand, uh, means to stand in awe. Now, does that sound familiar? This is where we get the concept of the fear of the Lord. But what started dawned on me as I read this is that how many times, though, do we actually stand in awe of the wrong thing? And to stand in awe is very, very close to the understanding of what worship is. And so when we are afraid of those things which are not worthy of our fear, we end up worshiping something other than God. And there's a nice, neat biblical word called idolatry 
that is used to describe that. And so what I came to the conclusion was is that when I let fear decide my decisions and when I let fear tell me what I'm going to do and I obey it, I am actually slipping into idolatry. And I'm worshiping something other. I'm letting something else tell me what I'm going to do. Make my decision. I can make all kinds of excuses and rationalize it out, but it's still standing in awe of something other than my God. Now, there are, of course, there's appropriate fears, and I've learned that fear, you know, is not always a bad thing. I mean, there's reason that um, most of us don't skateboard in the, the highway, you know, where there's trucks and cars, because we, you know, it's appropriate to be a little afraid of those trucks coming down this, you know, at you. But the problem is, is that when we're afraid of things that are inappropriate, you know, some of those phobias. Or for me, it was the needs of taking care of my family when I came into YWAM. It was a heavy burden, and I was terrified. I was terrified particularly of being seen as a bad father. So where do you struggle with courage? What are the fears that could that you are in danger of actually being led into false worship? Um, I'll I'll share with you my big three. Okay, and the first one is the fear of failure, which I hear a lot, and it makes me not want to try, it makes me not want to take risks, it makes me want to turn and run or make excuses. But when God speaks, and I am afraid because I've never done that before, never gone down that path before, and I see all the ways that my weaknesses could really show up if I do that, it's really easy for me to bow down to the idol that this fear represents. My um, second one is, is the fear of change. Um... I, I confess to you, the unknown scares me. I think we were talking in class this week that sometimes we are, sometimes we will choose to stay in a painful situation, a, 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 an unhealthy situation because it's known rather than making choices to step into a possible better situation because that is unknown and that is scary. And it's that fear that will keep us bound into such unhealthy patterns and keep us from doing the things that God is calling us to do. And then my third big one, and I'm probably the only one that ever deals with this one, but that's what others think of me. Yes, this Fear tempts me to worship the opinions and approval of individuals and groups and make my decisions in life and make my decisions of what is right and wrong and by what people think. It's idolatry. It's standing in awe of something other than the living true God. And so I just want to leave you with a challenge. I believe that there's a great majority of us in here that have faced already many fears. And I believe that we're probably sitting among a highly, 
a high level of courageous people. But what I'm seeing is that it is a continuous lifestyle that God is calling us to, a lifestyle of courage. He's not asking for just a bright flame that then just dies down to nothing. He's calling us our courage to burn for the long haul. And so I just wanted to say a prayer for us. I, um, I have come to appreciate this ministry so much, and I just um, want to bless this ministry and may more courageous people stand up and follow the word of the Lord and knock down the idols of fear that would dare to draw us away to something lesser. So Lord Jesus, thank you that you have called us to something much bigger than ourselves. We thank you, Lord God, that you are very aware of how powerful these idols can be, how tempting they are, how easily we can rationalize falling at their feet, but we ask for your help. We ask for mercy. God, we ask for courage, the grace to choose what is right, to choose obedience. And I thank you. I thank you for what is yet ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. Jeff, tonight, just so clearly and so eloquently uh, laid it out for us, our choice. The choice to choose courage, the choice to choose God, about our, above our own emotions and above our own fears. But he also laid before us just very much the things that we could worship instead of worshiping God. And whenever um, I identify with that challenge, I want to have the opportunity to make it right with God. And so what I want us to do tonight is, is the three fears that Jeff uh, laid out for us. The fear of failure, you know, uh, the fear of change, or the fear of what other people might think of us. If you identify with, those, with one, with two, or with all three of those fears, I want to invite you just to stand with me, and, and I'm standing as well, and just make things right with God.